Hey, Mike. Can you hear me? Hey, Don. How are you? I'm doing. I'm doing great. We're we're gonna hang out here for a little bit and wait for uh, more people to show up. I'm gonna try to look at my settings. Because right now it's asking me to admit people. I just want them to automatically. <clears throat> Man, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you run a salon from far away as you run a salon. Yeah, I have two. Two, two of them, 714 miles away. I don't, how, I don't know how in the world you do it. And I ain't gonna lie to you. I got four and I'm I'm an hour from all of them. Man, I, I it's just it's it's crazy. Yeah, well, you keep opening them, right? So well, yeah. I think I'm done. <laughs> uh yeah, so it's uh it's interesting. I had more. I, I divested from uh from some of them, but uh hey, welcome to the laser focus Hello. mastermind today. Uh we're gonna um just hang out here and uh, chat for a bit while we let more people uh, come in. I'm going to try and check out the settings here where I can Let's see. So where's everyone hail from? Where do you have your stores? South Georgia. South Georgia. Yep. And um, uh, you're coming through as iPhone. I, What's your name? It's uh Jimmy Waldron. <clears throat> oh hi Jimmy. Uh, I have two stores. Hi, nice to meet you. Pleasure meeting you as well. Oh. Where are you two stores? Uh, Bell Fountain, Ohio, and Urbana, Ohio. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. Um, how far do you live from your your salons? Uh, about five minutes from one and half an hour from the other. Okay, so that's that's close. I'm uh I'm about twelve hours from mine. So. Oh yeah. How long have you been doing that? Um, I, don't I don't know how you do it. I, ain't I, don't, I, I, I don't. I can't figure that out. Well, um, <laughs> I, I do have a, yeah. I, I do have a, a secret sauce, and um, I do train on it. So if you guys are interested, um, I do a one-on-one -on -one coaching, and that's exactly my specialty is to help salon owners figure out how to run their stores anywhere in the world. There's um, internet connection. <clears throat> okay. So that's yep. Yeah, that's my that's my thing. So how long have I been doing it? Well, let's see. I've been on this mountain for a couple of years now. Uh, before that, I lived in Baltimore for two years. And before that, I lived in Austin for five years. So the last nine years, I've been running my stores um, from, at, you know, between 700 and, and 1,000 miles away. Uh, in the beginning, it was... It was more interesting. I had to visit more often um, than I do now. It's been it's been a year since I last visited one of my stores, and my business partner, she hasn't visited the salons in seven years. Um, oh, but we yeah. meet we meet every Wednesday morning with our managers. We got to have competent managers. That's definitely one of that's, the that's your, that's my biggest issue. I think is is I I, I got to learn to just cut ties a lot sooner than what I do. Yep. Yeah, it's hard. They're they're your baby, you know. You're you're like this is my baby, right? I mean, it's a lot like when, you know, if you had kids and they they left the house at uh, at eighteen to go to college, um, you know, did they, you know, it was it was hard or that or that first time, you know, they went to uh, uh, they got on the bus to go to school. You know, it's it's all it's all kind of that same thing. So I I guess we'll get started. It's almost five after. Um, okay. 
normally have a few more people have joined us by this time, but they'll they'll pop in as we um, as we get started here. So I'm going to just uh, do a little screen share. So y'all can see my screen now, right? Yeah. Okay, yes. Excellent. So are you in the right place? Are, are you feeling overwhelmed by excessive hours? Are you exhausted by the whiners and slackers that you hire? Um, do you struggle with all the hats that you wear? And uh, are you frustrated with the poor work ethic? So if you answered yes to any of these things, you're, you're probably in the right place. And who am I to... <clears throat> To give any advice, well, I'm a three-time number one new release author on Amazon. Some of you might um, might have my books. Let me just admit Sandy here. <clears throat> well, welcome Sandy to the, the group. Uh, I've been hiring superstars since 1988, but I've owned tanning salons since 1998. So I've been in the tanning business for a minute or two. I operate currently two retail stores 714 miles away. My two stores are in central Illinois. Uh, and I'm a business systems and employee turnover reduction expert. I ended up getting some expertise in business systems. And you all asked, how do I run my businesses from 714? That's the key right there, setting up business systems. Um and then figuring out how to keep your employees is also a really key element to, to all of that. So today, what uh, I want to go over is how we uh, reprimand our employees. Please. What's that? Was there a question? Okay. No, I, what I, I want to go over is is how we reprimand our how we reprimand our employees, and we do it using uh, the progressive discipline system that that we developed, and it's basically a policy of our standards of conduct. You see that there on the right, twenty two clear expectations that get your employees to do what you want, and a reprimand, a progressive reprimand system which is a, a, it's a procedure that we're gonna go over, how do we reprimand them? And so why do we do, we do that? What is the, the, the point? Well, the first point is to correct behavior. So if you wanna have superstar employees, then you gotta correct their behavior because nobody comes to you a superstar. Some of them have traits of being a superstar, but nobody really comes to you as a superstar, you kind of have to mold them. I have a 17 year old who's working for me. She's been working for me for a year now. And what I tell you what, it was touch and go when she first started working for us. But right now, actually I have three 17 year olds. Right now, two of my three 17 year olds are my top salespeople in the, in the salon. Now it's taken a year to get them there. So you really got to, the younger they are, the, the more you have to work with them. But they've been through the progressive discipline system. They screwed up and we corrected their behavior. Um, and it's a great way to, it's, you can't think about it as you're disciplining them. It's, it's, it's more like a correction, but it also has a second benefit because if you do have to terminate their employment down the road, you want to have a documented paper trail that showed you didn't discriminate and that you applied your standards fairly and so that you can contest any unemployment insurance claims. And so that's the second benefit to having uh, a solid set of policies in place, the standards of conduct, plus we have a policies manual as well. <clears throat> and then a system by which you can discipline them and reprimand them. Now, when you um, when you reprimand them, yeah. So we're here to prevent behavioral issues proactively. 
We're here to give effective evaluations and feedback. So this is another opportunity for us to, to give them effective evaluations and then to discipline progressively for any, and then also to contest unemployment insurance claims. So here's, here's the procedure. I'm gonna walk you through it. On the right, you'll see our record of an oral reprimand. We also have a record of a written reprimand. I know it sounds funny that you would um, record an oral reprimand, but you need to, because memories fade, you need to have a paper trail for everything. So if you do an oral reprimand, and this is the job of your managers, <clears throat> you do an oral reprimand, you need to put it in writing so that everybody remembers. The employee heard it verbally, but we need to have it documented. So later we go back and say, did we deliver a reprimand to our staff for this particular item before? And that's what the record is for. So <clears throat> the very first thing is you have to remember that you're trying to target behavior. Nobody is dumb. Nobody is stupid. Nobody is bad. Those are, you're not, a, you're not attacking the individual. You're, you're addressing the behavior only. And when you do that, the employee can come out of this feeling much better about themselves. Here's the other thing about a reprimand. Always, always, always must be done in private. You never reprimand in front of another employee. You never reprimand in front of another customer. You just don't do it. When you, you immediately degrade, you immediately then are attacking the individual. They feel bad. And they really don't want to work for you when you do that. Now, in re contrast to that, when you show appreciation, when you give them girls and attaboys, you should do that publicly. That should be done in front of colleagues, in front of guests, in front of other owners, whatever it is. Whenever you give a praise, and you should do it all the time, you should be praising nonstop. There should be daily praises of your staff, fine. You, your job should be to catch them doing things right. So in my situation, it's catching my managers doing things right because they report to me. By extension, then I'm always encouraging my managers to catch my staff doing things, things right. And in fact, today we talked about um, an employee that we need to, we call it setting free. We don't fire employees, we set them free. Today at our manager meeting, we talked about an employee that we need to set free because she's um, habitually tardy and we've we've gone through the reprimand process. Um, she's received her oral reprimand. She's gonna get another written reprimand for it. Uh, in this particular case, we'll give her a third strike. Here's the third thing, make it quick, make it immediate. It should be one minute or less and then move on. Don't dwell on the issue. And then make it constructive. Be very specific about what they have done and explain why the policy is important. Okay. We need you to show up. You, you, you're failing to show up to work on time. We need you to show up to work on time because another employee shift is ending. And when their shift ends, they would like to go home. They have things to do. They have a doctor's appointment. They have to pick up their kids, whatever it is. When you don't make it on time to work, you are affecting not only the customer service, but you're also affecting your fellow employees. So always explain why you have a policy and that makes it 100% easier for them to swallow. Then leave them feeling value. Remind them that you value them. Remind them that um, they're a valuable employee, but that you expect more from them. I, I remember um, when my kids were growing up, the, the one thing that they hated to do was to disappoint dad. That was the, the one thing that drove them crazy, more nuts than uh, grounding them or anything is that if they felt like they had disappointed me, um, then they, they really felt like that was the punishment was that. So, you know, when I, when I told, explained to them, I expected more of them. That was the moment where they realized that they had really screwed up. And then document the reprimand, especially oral reprimands, because written reprimands are automatically documented, but the oral reprimands are not. And then don't give yourself a heart attack. Forgive and forget. Don't hold a grudge against any of your staff. Just move on to the next thing that you have to do because life is too um, life is too short. You're going to die young if you 
you do that. Now, <clears throat> we've done this always in on paper. And it's, it's always been um, a system that the managers had a Word doc. They filled it out. You saw the reprimand form that I had on the screen now. But I just recently created this for my management team. And I, um, I give this to my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients as well. And it's a, it's a Google Doc. It has five tabs at the bottom. It has the oral reprimand, written reprimand number one, written reprimand number two. It has our standards of conduct listed here, and it's totally modifiable. You can add your own standards. And then it has all the settings in here so that you can make this your own. You can add um, an image here. So if you want it, actually, the one thing I always say to do is never work on your, your template, make a copy of it first. Before you start modifying anything. So I've, I've made this Google Doc. I also have it in Microsoft Excel, if you prefer it in Microsoft Excel. But you can um, insert an image. And I like to assert the image in the cell, not over the cells. And I'll just grab um, one of my logos. <clears throat> So do you have a handbook of uh, policies? I do. I have a policies and procedure handbook, which I also share with my one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, clients as well. How does the one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching work? Your first 30-minute session is free. It's all Zoom calls. <clears throat> and then it's uh, $219 for the first month, and it's $129 a month after that for unlimited 15 minute Zoom coaching calls. And what we'll do is we give you um, field work assignment to work on. And then from there you, um, let's see, I need. So um, what all does that entail? Is that just, uh mostly the structuring of the company or is it also like uh social media um campaigns um we'll work know, on we'll work special. on anything related to the business that you're struggling with my specialty is is business setup and operating your business from a distance so that's pretty much employee management issues but um i am I am uh, <clears throat> capable to help you with just about anything because I know how to uh, get the answers to any of your questions that you have um, in the process. So you can see now it'll have your logo here and then you just put in the employee's name. And then the date of the reprimand. And then there's a pull down list here and you just pick from whatever the um, violation is. So here's an example. Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Turkey Run in Indiana. But when I did live in Illinois, my family and I would go to Indiana. So Illinois is kind of uh, funny that way as um, we go to our neighboring states for all the parks. So we head to Wisconsin uh, to enjoy the parks there. We head over to Indiana to enjoy, enjoy the parks there. And we were over there and I ran into one of my employees. And I didn't know because my general manager was managing the stores. I didn't know anything about her situation, but it occurred to me. Uh, the way she was behaving when we ran into her, that something was amiss. So when I got back, I contacted my general manager and he said, yeah, she called off. Her grandmother passed away. She called <laughs> crying. 
Um, and I said, well, we ran into her on the trails at Turkey Run. So she called off so she could do that. So we terminated her on that. And the policy was dishonest, right? So um, there was no three strikes for that. We have some policies that are immediately cause immediate termination. And then we have other policies where we go through the full three steps. So the date of the first offense, maybe it was yesterday. And then you would describe the offense, all right? And I have examples over here what that means. Now, you need to put in the words unwilling or unable to follow the policy. That's important for the unemployment office. They want to hear those words in anything that you um, describe. So in this particular case, um, I have an example where I said they were unwilling or unable to clean the toilets as instructed on 423. Um, and so if that's the, the thing, then you just put that here. And then if whatever the disciplinary action is to be taken, and that's a pull down list as well. So if you look here, one through seven, we only use three of these. We either have a verbal warning, a written warning only, or a termination. Those are the three things we use. But you could, you could put them on probation. You could demote them. You could suspend them without pay. You know there are lots of options here listed. But this one's a written reprimand. And then there's a supervisor list here. So that's in the settings. In the settings, you list your supervisor. All right. So. Um, <laughs> Mike's one of my, my managers. Nicole is, I can put myself down in case I have to reprimand one of my managers, right? So now in the pull down list, I can say, you know, Nicole did this and this is saved. And now we save this for this employee. And you can see here, the system has given you a recommended name to save it under. So you can copy it. And now that's the file. And you keep one file for every employee, for every um, standard of conduct um, violated. You do not mix different standards within the same progression. Okay, the progression must be for the same thing. So if we move on to a written reprimand number for a written reprimand, it must be for the same reason. You can't switch over and say, okay, she was dishonest before, and now it's because um, she's failing to, um, for, because of tardiness. You need to start a separate file for tardiness. Okay, otherwise, the unemployment office is going to say, nope, you need to have the same progression for each of these different violations. So we must stick with the same violation. So in this particular case, um, it wasn't really dishonesty. If we weren't cleaning toilets, this would have been um, uh, insubordination, okay? Failing to do something that we, a legal, a lawful um, request. We gave her a lawful request to clean toilets. She didn't do it. So that was, that's insubordination. Now let's say Mary Jane, um, Three days later, again, is failing to clean toilets. So now we're gonna put the data of this, we're gonna have given it to her right away. And in this particular case, it says here, all right, now we see that, um, You know, she failed to um, do all those things. Looks like I need to. Merge the cells. Okay, so now it it's, um, that's what it is. And then the, this time the disciplinary action is going to be a written reprimand. And you always have to tell the employee that if they repeat the offense, it's they could be terminated. They could lose their job. So that's another requirement. They must they must know the policy, which is why we repeat the policy here in the reprimand, and 
we must um, uh, tell her that there's consequences for that. Okay, and it doesn't have to be the same manager each time. It could be a different manager. And then finally, a third reprimand for this particular case, we might give them three. Same thing. You fill all the information, except for this time, um, it's a the action is termination, and we always print these and give a copy to the employee and the manager keeps a copy and the manager signs these. We used to have the employees sign them, but nine times out of 10, they refuse to sign them and, and they don't even want a copy of them until it's time for them to file for an unemployment insurance claim. And then they're like, oh, I need a copy of my, of my uh, termination document. And that's how we are able to have the best um, and lowest possible unemployment insurance rate because we can test every single one of our um, unemployment uh, insurance claims. Do you guys have any questions on this new tool that I created? Does it seem pretty mm, easy no. to use? <clears throat> yes. Something your managers would be able to, to implement right away. And they can, like, like I said, you can, um, you just have to know how to, in, uh, I'm not stoked about Google Docs, but it's free to everyone. So you, you have it in this particular case, you have to know how to um, uh, select what it is that you want to print. So it requires you to, um, and the instructions are here. It tells you what you have to do to print. So you have to highlight you know, the, the fields that you want. So I don't have a big problem with uh, with my employees as far as discipline. I, I should be a little stricter, uh, definitely setting out uh, exact guidelines of what ex what is expected and sure. um, stick to that. That's something I need to do. My my problem mainly um, with employees is uh, sales, uh, and I know I need to get something written up. So that's a, a standard thing they do. Um, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, guys? The, have, yeah, yeah. So um, I don't know if you have my lotion sales secrets book or not, but that's an entire sales system. Yeah, um, I can't believe I. I actually did order that until we had this call. I'd forgotten about it. I need to ask my girlfriend if, if that was ever sent. I, I do remember ordering it. It was like $15 or something, right? Yeah. On Amazon. Yeah. 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 I ordered it. She buys so much stuff from Amazon. I I don't even know if we ever got that in. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is the book I'm, I'm giving away a copy of it today. Signed to uh, one of the four people here who are on the, uh, on the call. Um, but yes, that's, this is, this is an entire sales system. Again, I, I work in systems, everything is systems, 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 systems. And, and if you work with me, you're going to get tired of hearing about systems. So this is a sales system that you can use. Um, there are some salons who are even more advanced than I am. They do great. I know some salons do great with beauty bars. We've not had success with beauty bars, so we don't do beauty bars. But I know other salons have had done great success, have had great success with beauty bars. We don't like to do a lot of discounting. Uh, I know salons who think it's it's the shit that they love to do discounting and they, um, you know, they sell. We offer discounts to our members, but otherwise we don't uh, we don't put things uh, frequently on sale. We don't. We, we try to sell a lot of stuff above MSRP, in fact. Um, so, uh, but it, it's covered here in the in the lotion sales um, secret books. Okay. Now that's, that's it that I have to cover for today. Um, all of you will get an email with the replay of the video. I'll give you notes from the session today. I'll give you an opportunity to sign up for a 30 minute free one-on-one -on -one coaching call. If that's something that you would like to do um, just to see if we're a fit for as a coaching customer. And again, unlike in a tanning salon, everything I sell comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you buy something from me and you are not happy with it, um, no questions asked, I give, I get, I'll give you your money back and, and no, no questions asked. 
the same thing with the coaching. If in 29 days, 23 hours, 59 minutes into our first month of coaching, you're like, um, it's not working for me. I'm going to give you your $219 back and we'll part friends. Um, and then also there's no commitment. So if you do decide to, to do the first month, you don't have to do a second or a third or fourth. You can cancel any time you, you would, you would like to. All right. Sounds so great. Sound there. Yep. Thank you. Cool. All right. I'll, uh, uh, let me just. Thank you. All right. All right. Oh, hey, Sandy. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Mike, do you have any last minute questions? Good. Thank you, Noah.